1964, the height of the Cold War. Across the world, communist forces advanced. First Europe, then China, Korea, and now Vietnam. On the 2nd of August, 1964, whilst conducting a signal surveillance patrol on international waters, the USS Maddox came under attack by North Vietnamese aggressors. Sir, North Vietnamese PZ boats on the horizon! They're firing! Fire well! Despite the warning shots, the three North Vietnamese ships persisted in pursuing the USS Maddox. Returning fire, the Maddox left the torpedo boats badly damaged. If this little nation goes down the drain and can't maintain her independence, ask yourself what's going to happen to all the other little nations. Joined by another destroyer, the USS Turner Joy, a second attack on the USS Maddox allegedly occurred two days later on the 4th of August. Mr. President, we had a, just had a uh, report from the commander of that task force out there that they have sighted two unidentified vessels uh, and three unidentified prop aircraft. And therefore, the uh, carrier launched uh, two F-8s, two A-4Ds, and four A-1s, which are prop Hello? Secretary McNamara, Lino. Mr. President, we just had word by telephone from Admiral Sharp that the uh, destroyer is under torpedo attack. I think I might get uh, Dean Rusk and Mac Bundy have come over here and we'll go over these retaliatory actions and then we ought to... The determination of all Americans to carry out our full commitment to the people and to the government of South Vietnam will be redoubled by this outrage. In the aftermath of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, Lyndon B. Johnson authorized all necessary measures in support of freedom and in defense of peace in Southeast Asia, beginning what many know and recognize as the Vietnam War. In Southeast Asia, we want nothing more and nothing less. However, it soon became clear that the bombings were doing little to slow the advance of the North into the South, and the deployment of U.S. troops to Vietnam was soon recommended to President Johnson. Amidst fears of the theory that the entire region would too communism one after another like dominoes, the measure was authorized. On the 8th of March, 1965, the first U.S. forces landed in Vietnam. On the 14th of November, 1965, an encounter near the Ia Drang Valley marks the first major engagement between the U.S. Army and the North Vietnamese Army. Facing the U.S. and South Vietnamese forces were not only the North Vietnamese Army, abbreviated as NVA, but also the Viet Cong, communist guerrillas originating in South Vietnam. In possession of superior firepower but unable to invade North Vietnam due to fears of Chinese involvement in the war, as it happened in Korea, General Westmoreland, the U.S. general responsible for overseeing the war, adopted a strategy of attrition. Search and destroy patrols were mounted, aiming to kill so many as to render the enemy unable to fight. Though the U.S. inflicted heavy losses on the NVA and Viet Cong, the North still held its own as their forces could simply retreat and return to the area once the U.S. forces had left. Bordering Asians, specifically Laos and Cambodia, also became involved as Viet Cong supply lines and local communist civil wars drew in U.S. support. Routes such as the Ho Chi Minh Trail along the border with Laos and Cambodia attracted great efforts by the U.S. to destroy them. Herbicides such as Agent Orange were sprayed in great quantities along these areas to destroy the jungles and crops which hid and fed the NVA and Viet Cong. Though claimed to be harmless to humans, Agent Orange's dioxin content proved to be the contrary, leading to elevated risk of birth defects and cancer amongst those exposed. Great portions of land in Vietnam remain contaminated to this day.
Other nations, such as Thailand, Japan, and Korea, also sent troops and land air bases to assist in the war in Vietnam. On January 30, 1968, forces of North Vietnam led a campaign of surprise attacks throughout South Vietnam on the Vietnamese holiday of Tet. The Tet Offensive marked a significant change from the usual guerrilla warfare of the Viet Cong. Well, come on, all of you big strong men. Uncle Sam needs your help again. Got himself in a terrible jam. Way down yonder in Vietnam. Put down your books and pick up a gun. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun. And it's one, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the pearly gates. Well, there ain't no time to wonder why. We we'll leave all don't be slow, I'm man, this is war, a go-go, there's plenty good money to be made, supply in the army, oh, ready to be paid, just don't be afraid of it to drop the bomb. Over the pond, U.S. citizens, young and old, began to protest the large casualties in a war they felt could not be won. Fanning the flames was the widely publicized brutality of the war. Incidents and atrocities committed by U.S. and South Vietnamese forces, such as the Mai Lai, galvanized the anti-war movement. I remember the day as if it was yesterday. I was huddled in the bunker with many others. We were all scared and confused. There were only the elderly and children in the village when the Americans came in. Yet they killed everything, even the animals, and burnt down the village. Faced with an increasingly unhappy public, in 1969, the newly elected U.S. President Richard Nixon decided to take steps towards ending the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. The reasons for the deep division about Vietnam is that many Americans have lost confidence in what their government has told them about our policy. The plan consisted of negotiations and Vietnamization. Vietnamization was the process of replacing U.S. troops in Vietnam with U.S. trained and supplied Vietnamese troops. Though the rapid withdrawal of U.S. troops proved to be popular at home, it devastated the morale of remaining troops and left the Vietnamese troops untrained. Though Vietnamization has proceeded fairly well, the negotiations between Nixon's advisor, Henry A. Kissinger, remained in deadlock. It was only until after a failed offensive by the North that significant progress began to be made. At 12.30 Paris time today, January 23, 1973, the agreement on ending the war and restoring peace in Vietnam was initialed by Dr. Henry Kissinger on behalf of the United States and Special Advisor Lee Duc Tho on behalf of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Finally, on January 27, 1971, the Paris Peace Accords was signed in an attempt to establish peace in the region. The Accords called for withdrawal of U.S. troops and a ceasefire between the North and the South until a peaceful reunification could be achieved. Unsteady peace brought about by the Accords did not last long as both sides accused each other of constantly breaching the agreement. Stifled by an increasingly war-weary public, the U.S. was unable to stave off the final collapse of South Vietnam four years later, bringing an end to one of the Cold War's bloodiest proxy conflicts. <laughs>